Web development is an ever-changing landscape where it seems like there's a new library or framework coming out pretty much every single day, and it's incredibly hard to keep up with and learn all of these new things. Now for me, that's essentially my job to stay up to date and learn these things, so I want to share some of the tips and tricks I've learned along the way to help with you learning these things even quicker. I have a five-step process that I like to use when learning any new technology, and it really has helped me accelerate my learning process and get more videos out to you. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And today I wanna to talk about my five-step learning process. And I'm gonna be using Svelte as the example here because it's something that I want to learn and I haven't taken the time to learn yet. So you can really see how I apply this process to learning a real world framework. So the five-step process is as follows. The very first thing I like to do is answer the what and the why. Essentially, I like to learn what does this library or framework do and why is it important and why should I use it? Essentially, what are the benefits of using this thing and how exactly does it work? The second step is the getting started step where I go through whatever the getting started documentation is or any tutorials that the documentation has. Then after that, I move on to the third section, concepts, where I read through the documentation to understand all of the different concepts in the library. And then we move on to the last two steps, which are interchangeable in my opinion, and those are covering different examples. So looking at code examples and kind of modifying them. And then finally, the fifth step, which is dealing with the exact API documentation, the real nitty gritty information inside the library. So I like to follow all five of those steps, the first three in order, and then the last two, you can interchange up to your own preferences. So to get started with that first step, I wanna figure out what the what's and the why's are for using Svelte. So I know what Svelte is. It's a front end framework, similar to like React, Vue, or Angular. And the why for Svelte is that it's going to be quicker because it has a smaller bundle size because it is compiled. It has no virtual DOM, as you can see on the homepage, it says it right here. And it's generally less code to write and a little bit easier to understand. It's kind of a little bit more magical than React, which is very verbose. At least that's my understanding is felt. But if I wanted to understand this further and really deep dive into this, the steps I like to take is first go to the homepage of this library or framework if they have one. If it's a large framework like Svelte, for example, it's going to have a homepage that you can go to. But if there is no homepage, then I'd recommend going to just the documentation on GitHub generally and see if they have a section that explains what and why the library is important. Almost every single library has that at least. Then what I do is I just read through all that information. So I'll read through this homepage here, see what I can all find, you know. On this homepage, for example, they have a couple examples here, which are kind of cool to go through. And they have a few different sections about things that are important. And then I can even click learn more to really figure out why these different things are important. So I'd probably read through all of this different documentation. And then if I still feel like I haven't learned enough, I'll go to YouTube or go to blog articles to try to read and learn more about Svelte and just figure out why it's useful. I don't wanna look at any code really right now. I just kinda of wanna figure out, okay, why do people use this and how does it actually work? This entire process should probably take you anywhere from like 10 minutes for a smaller library, all the way up to maybe an hour at most on a larger project like Svelte, maybe even two hours on something really large, but it shouldn't take too long. And the whole idea of this process is to first of all figure out if it's even important for you to learn this thing. I may read all this and realize, you know what, Svelte is not at all important. I'm gonna stick with React. I don't like the things that Svelte does. Or you'll learn, hey, I really like this and I really wanna learn it. So if you don't like it, it'll save you a ton of time because you don't waste that time learning it. And obviously if you like it, it'll set you up even better. Also, the second thing this step does is it really allows you to key in on the important things about this framework or library. So I know with Svelte, some of the most important things are the fact that it has no virtual DOM, the fact that it's compiled, and the fact that you generally write less code than React. So when I'm going through the documentation, I can really pay attention to those important features. Now, if I was looking at something like TanStack Router here, for example, I know that this is really good for routing, and also this is going to be based on TypeScript really heavily, so I know I really need to focus on the TypeScript benefits and the typing benefits of this router, as opposed to React Router, which doesn't have all of those different things. So depending on what tool I'm looking at, I know exactly what are the important things for me to look at in the documentation, and that's what this first step is all about, and again, it shouldn't take you very long. So I just went ahead, I gave a brief read to these three different sections, and I feel like that, combined with my previous knowledge, answers the why and the what of Svelte for me. So I know that I want to learn more about Svelte. So the next step that we want to move to is the getting started step. And this is when you dive into the actual documentation. So if I click on docs here for Svelte, you'll notice that if I go to the getting started section, it's not quite what I would expect. They even have this before we begin section that specifically says that this is for detailed API references. That's step five from the process I talked about. And if you're newer to Svelte, you should go with the interactive tutorial or the examples. In my process, I like to leave examples to the end, so I would go to the interactive tutorial, and depending on the library or framework you use, they're either going to have getting started documentation, or they're going to have an interactive tutorial, which is the case for Svelte. 
Now in a library like TanStack Query, you can see that they have a getting started section on the left hand side here, which walks you through all of the really basic concepts and important things to know. So as you can see here, we go through like installation, a quick start, some things about dev tools and some other like resources like some talks, for example. So this goes through a lot of different stuff and you just kind of step by step go through and read everything inside the getting started section. And it's really important that you slowly go through this and make sure you understand what's going on. Now, some libraries don't really have a getting started section or their getting started section is really not that useful. For example, the React Select library, the getting started is this. That's all their getting started section is. So in those cases, I would recommend either just skipping this step and moving straight to doing step three, which is concepts, or try to find a YouTube video or a blog article that walks you through some of the getting started steps. I would honestly lean more towards a YouTube video or blog article on the getting started section if you can find one, but if you can't, just move straight to the concept section. Now in our case, we're doing Svelte, which means that they have this tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through this entire tutorial real quick and I'll come back to you after I finish it. Now I haven't finished going through this yet, but I did run into something really important. One of the concepts that I'm learning right now inside of this is the concept of reactive variables, essentially with this dollar sign syntax. And this is something that's kind of cool and I really wanna figure out what are the limits of this? How does this syntax actually work? So you may be tempted, at least I'm tempted in this case, to start playing around with the code to really figure out how this works. And this can be a bit of a double-edged sword. I would recommend if you get curious about something like, okay, how does this work? Let me try to test the limits to see like, what happens if I do another one of these where I you know, copy this down and I have like doubled two, whoops, doubled two like that. And then I try to use this down here. What would that look like? And I do that, you can now see, okay. And if I come up here and I make sure I set this to doubled so I can see that they're reacting with each other, I can see, okay, it's still doubling the doubling, which is working as I expect. So I can start playing around with this. And this is a good thing to do. Again, I recommend doing this, playing around with it a little bit, but don't go too far, don't dive too deep. Just kind of sate your curiosity, figure out how the limits of these things work, but don't try to deep dive into figuring out exactly how everything works inside the tutorial or the getting started, because that's not what it's meant for. It's meant for you getting up and running. The final step, step five, is where you can really start deep diving into these concepts. So I'd recommend play around with it a little bit, but then write down all the things that you're curious about on the side as you're learning, and then you can come back and look at the detailed API reference for that section to really figure out exactly what's going on. So let me get back to figuring out this tutorial. I finally finished going through the entire Svelte tutorial, which was pretty lengthy and quite involved. And now we're ready to move on to step three, but actually not quite. There's a little bit of a fork you can take here before moving on to step three, and that would be doing step 2.5 essentially. And step 2.5 is just going on YouTube or a blog article and finding a crash course for this topic. I actually like to do this a lot of times, especially if the getting started documentation is pretty lackluster, or if I feel like I just don't know enough after doing it. For example, this getting started documentation is very small compared to Svelte's massive tutorial of topics that you can cover. So I would go onto YouTube, find a crash course there, or find a blog article with a crash course, and just watch that to really learn more about the different concepts. And a lot of times these crash courses will really help you with connecting the dots that the getting started may be left you questioning on. And the real benefit to these crash course style videos or blog articles is that they really help you connect all the different dots. And the people teaching these crash courses, a lot of times will tell you things like, hey, watch out for this, or hey, make sure you do this. Things that the documentation in the getting started section just won't tell you. So once you've done that, the next step is to move on to the concept section and this is really hit or miss on the actual library that you're learning for example svelte they don't have a concept section but essentially this tutorial is a massive section that kind of teaches you all the concepts you need to know so they kind of bundled them into one if i go over to tan stack query you can see that this has a guides and concepts section it may also be called guides for example and you can see it, it kind of explains the high level of all these different concepts this is a pretty large one but you don't have to read all of them just read the most important ones and then you know we have the api documentation at the very bottom here along with examples React Select is a little bit different. As you can see, they have some sections at the very top here, but there's really no specific section on concepts. That's kind of what this one page right here is doing. So it's a little bit hit and miss on the documentation you go for, but the idea is to try to find the higher level concepts without diving into the nitty gritty details of the exact implementation of the API. Again, if you can't find anything here, the best course of action is just to go on YouTube or blog articles and just search for more and more videos on that topic to try to figure out, okay, what are the high level concepts of this and to kind of explain it to me. A lot of times the crash courses will kind of do this for you as well. So you can kind of get two birds with one stone by watching those. Now, once you've actually read through all of the different concepts, for example, if you come in here and you read through some of the important concepts they have in this section, then what you can do is you can move on to step four or step five. Again, these are interchangeable in my opinion. Now, if you're feeling like you're not really sure how everything ties together and how everything works, the best case to go is to go into the examples. So inside Svelte, you can see that there's an example section here and I can really look through, okay, 
how does declaring props work or you know how does certain binding of events work you can go through these examples this is a very involved list they have lots of different examples but most libraries are going to have a few examples for example here you can see there's a list of examples it's not a massive list but there's quite a few examples and they start with something that's really simple all the way to some much more complex stuff that you can look into so you can really deep dive into these examples if you want to see examples of how things work and just overall how the entire library works together that's what the examples are really good at now, if instead you have a lot of questions of how specific things work, like when you're going through the getting started documentation of the concepts, you wrote down a lot of things where you're like, I wonder how this works. I wonder if I can do X, Y, and Z. Then the best case scenario is to go into the docs here and define the specific docs. So if I was really curious, oh, what can I all do with this at debug property? I will go to the docs and just read the section for at debug. It's fairly short. Most of the time it's not going to be very long. And this will give you everything you need to know about that specific thing. So if there's any questions that came up as you were going through, go to the documentation and try to answer them. But please don't read the entire documentation. I mean, look at the massive amount of text this is. I generally read through all of this when I'm trying to teach a topic, but if you're not teaching something, you don't need to know all of this information. Instead, just look up the things that you have questions on, look at some example code, and then from there, go ahead and start building out whatever project you wanna build. The reason I say that is because you're going to learn so much when you start building a project, and as you start to run into roadblocks when you're building your project, that's the best time to go to the documentation. So for example, if I'm going along and I'm making stuff and I start to have problems with how exactly I bind a select, for example, I have a select box, I never dealt with that in the getting started tutorial, I can come straight to the documentation, I can read this section right here on binding a select, as you can see, it's very short, and it'll give me all the information I need to know on binding a select value. So when you're starting to work on a project and you're starting to get stuck on things, or you're like, I wonder if there's an easier way to do this, that's the best time to look into the more nitty gritty of the documentation. Now, if you are the type of person that just likes to read the documentation and really know what's going on, I still wouldn't recommend doing it right away. Instead, I would still recommend working on a project and after you've at least experienced and worked with the tool a little bit, then go back and read the documentation. That's actually how I go about doing things. I still like to work on building out projects, really small projects, they don't have to be huge, just kind of using the library, using the tool, figuring out how it works, and then that's when I'll start going through and reading the documentation in order to make a video on the topic. The reason I recommend doing it this way is it's just information overload if you just read the documentation before you actually start implementing the tool because I'm gonna be reading this and most of the things I run into are something that I've never seen before because I've never actually tried implementing the tool. So if you just start with the documentation, it's gonna make it much harder to understand and remember everything. Well, if you've used the tool at least a little bit and then you come to the documentation, you'll at least be able to be like, oh, okay, I've done that or oh, this is related to something I've done. So it's a much much easier to connect and remember. Another thing to take into consideration, especially if you're dealing with a large project like Svelte, for example, is don't try to learn everything all at once or in one day or even in one week. Take breaks and take time to learn a little bit at a time. Maybe you spend two hours doing some research on one day and then you take a break, do two hours on another day or one hour on another day. Just break it up into smaller chunks. It's going to make it easier to remember. Your brain won't feel so fried. And overall, it's just going to be a better learning experience for you. The final thing that you can do that actually really helps is to take notes. If you're really wanting to deep dive and learn something, taking notes on the topic is really important. And as you can see, that's what I do for all of my complex crash course videos. And I actually have this broken out very similar to how I recommend learning. For example, the first thing I like to start with is what are the goals of this thing, the what and why, step number one here. Number two, I look at the setup and basic usage. This is essentially the getting started guide of how to do these different things. And then I like to go through and look at the high level concepts. Step number three, you can see here I have use query, use mutation. These are like the two big high level concepts of this TanStat query React query library. Inside of these high level concepts, I like to include a lot of examples as well as a lot of the nitty gritty kind of details. So as you can see here, if I look inside these important properties, this is kind of like nitty gritty details on certain things. You can see I have some code examples inside of here and I just have a whole section just purely for examples. So this kind of mixes in steps four and five where I take the most important concepts from the documentation and from the examples and throw them directly into my notes underneath each one of these different concepts. So if you really wanna make sure you master something, taking notes on it is one of the best ways you can do that because it's something you can always come back to and look at and it also really forces you to learn the topics to be able to take notes on them. And that's all there is to learning a new technology as quickly as possible. If you wanna check out some of the crash courses I have, I have tons of them available. I'm gonna link them right over here for you. It can kind of give you an example of how I actually go through learning things, as well as help you out with step 2.5 of the process. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.